it's not just the idea, it's not just the clarity, it's the process, procedures, and the steps that people need to take to get to, to the next level. We might know that I want to get, I have 400 students, I want to get 600 students, or I need to advertise more. No, there's more than to that, but I will give you that process. Master Zolfi Ahmed, welcome back to the Martial Arts Media Business Podcast. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Happy to be back. Awesome. So I think we, it's good for us to just go back down in the history of the journey on the podcast, and then we'll jump into the, the big reason we're chatting today. So we spoke back, oh, I was looking earlier, in February 2018, we, we spoke about the real secret to success with your martial arts business. I believe this was just before Fred De Palma's event in mm -hmm. San Diego, where we, where we met the first time. Then on episode 110, we spoke uh, how to become a martial instructor. We were actually, just when your book came out, we had a chat about that. And today, we're back. We're back for episode 142, because you're coming to Australia. How good is yes, that? Yes, <laughs> I'm excited. Thank you very much for the kind invitation. And I'm super excited. I, I can't wait to get on the plane and go and meet you again and all the friends in Australia. I have some very good friends, fellow martial artists in Australia. I would love to see them and make new friends. And, you know, just I am excited, super excited. I think it'd be good, even though we've, you've been on, this is the third time around in the podcast, it'd be good to go back to your story. But uh, a story I want to share quickly, which was really, I think a pivotal point where we really connected is at Fred De Palma's event, you spoke at the event and I, I really loved your loved your chat and, and your knowledge. And I remember you making a lot of Jay Abraham references, which I thought, oh, that's that's really good. For those of you that don't know Jay Abraham, uh, look him up. <laughs> um, and then the morning when we were flying back, uh, we were all waiting down in the lobby at breakfast. We were all waiting for our, our trip back. And we just got into a conversation. And um, it, it was one of my most valuable conversations I've had in, in martial arts, martial arts business. And you just openly sharing things that I can do in my business, how I should approach it, how I should approach the American market differently. Yeah. So I, I want to thank you for that because I, I took a, a lot away from that. And so we've always kept in touch. And so the conversation came up and, and I know we mentioned it somewhere along the line. We mentioned, you know, maybe sometime we'll, you'll come to Australia. And, uh, and so we, we host this event for our members once a year. Uh, uh, we call it the partners intensive. We did one in Brisbane last year. I just moved to the beautiful sunshine coast in Australia. And I thought I'm never going to do a great event in Australia. It's got to be here because it's beautiful. And we, we're planning one for the U S later the year. And, uh, Lucky enough, our dates have uh, aligned well, and I'm really excited that you're going to be joining us for the event. Me too. It's a pleasure. I, I can't wait to. Just, you know, I've been wanting to go to Australia for many, many years. Actually, in 1979, uh, you know, I'm originally from Pakistan. So we had a Pakistani Burmese kickboxing team. We were going to go to Australia for a tournament in 1979. And... Um, we had some visa problem issues at that time. So half the members of the team got the visa, half the members didn't get the visa. I was one of the people who could have gotten the visa, but I was very young. So my parents said, no, we, we have to have the whole team go otherwise. So lo and behold, the, the, the trip got canceled. And we came to find out that the promoter, an Australian promoter, uh, unfortunately, he went through a heart attack. So the whole event got, you know, uh, wow. um, canceled, postponed. So since then, and since 1979, I've been looking forward to going to Australia. And I have some friends who live in Perth and some Sydney. And uh, then you are there. And uh, there's some great martial artists like uh, Ridwan and Hakan, a good friends of mine. And um, uh, we have uh, Phil and, um, you know, uh, Grant. Are also uh, I think they're in uh, um, be based Sydney, in Perth, 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 Perth. So they came and visited Bushiban headquarters, and uh, just you know I just connected my with my Aussie friends. So uh, yes, and again thank you for uh, this kind invitation, and I look forward to that. So on that, and, and thanks for the brief intro. But I think even though you've been on the podcast before, I, I know a lot of uh, martial artists that I mentioned 
we're, we're really excited that that you that you're coming to Australia for the first time. And then there's a few that that aren't that familiar with with you and and what you do in the space. So I think it, it'd be good to just recap on that. Just give us a, a bit of a background, your your history in the martial arts, Bushy Band International, and so forth. Sure, happy to. So uh, I'm originally from Pakistan. You know, uh, most of you know where Pakistan is. But at age 23, I migrated to the United States and um, I grew up in the martial arts. Uh, my history in the martial arts is wrestling, Pakistani, Indo-Pakistani wrestling. As a little kid, uh, it's like, uh, you know, soccer in America, baseball. Most everybody is uh, um, uh, is uh, exposed to Indo-Pakistani wrestling. And actually, my father was a patron, a big fan of wrestling. And my grandfather was a patron and fan of wrestling. And actually, the great Gama, the one of the greatest wrestlers ever lived, he, uh, my grandfather's family uh, sponsored him. And they had a special pit, the Akara, we call it Akara wrestling pit, in my grandfather's land where Gama would come and do, we call Zor, you know, the, the uh, wrestler, wrestle away. So, and my grandfather's family sponsored him to some of his fights. So it goes back into my history, my ancestors. And one of my uncles was a wrestler. And my, as, a, as a young kid, my father would take me to the, in Pakistan, the Bolu wrestling pit and all. We would go see the matches and they would take me as a five, six year old, go just roll around in the pit and, you know, hang out with the wrestlers and learn a few tricks and, you know, take downs and all this cool stuff. And then as you get older, you get into other sports, hockey and cricket and all this stuff. Then I started uh, at very early age, judo. My brother uh, was a military cadet. And uh, he would come and beat me up from the military college when he would come home and do judo and boxing. And then I got into neighborhood boxing. And my brother's friend was a judo brown belt. So he would teach us judo. And we would take, you know, comforters from the house. We didn't have mats. And we'd put them down in the you know, backyard. And we, that were my judo uh, mats. And we learned some basic judo from him. Right. And then uh, in 1975, a Burmese grandmaster, uh, Grandmaster M.A. Thai, he had migrated from Burma to East Pakistan, which is Bangladesh now, and to, into Pakistan. And he started teaching Burmese bando, Burmese martial arts. Lethwe is the bare knuckle kickboxing. Naban is the Burmese wrestling. Bando, Banshe, Thaing. He's still around. He still teaches. He's still my teacher. And uh, so I enrolled in his school. That was my first official school that I enrolled in Eastern martial arts. My father didn't care much for boxing. So I would add a few boxing matches when he found out I was doing boxing. He didn't think it was good for me. Too much trauma, too much, you know. But Bando Lethwe was even worse. But we didn't know. Back home, it was new. Nobody knew what we I said. It's karate. You know, we're doing Bando karate. So, okay, karate is good. You go, you know, train. So I started training at very early age, actually nine, nine years of age. And then I'm still his student till to this day. Whenever I go back, I, of course, give my love and respect to him and learn and visit with him. And then... I was very fortunate to be on the Pakistani team, martial arts team. The first time we ever went outside Pakistan, the national team, we went to Malaysia to compete in the Kijo Hanan uh, International Karate Championship, 37 countries. Uh, I was the youngest competitor ever, and I won a gold medal in kata and weapon, and I got disqualified in fighting because our style of fighting was different than traditional karate. We were more bando contact people. So, you know, I, I broke somebody's nose. I got disqualified, blah, blah, blah. So 14 years old, a little bitty stinky little kid. And uh, uh, <laughs> so from that that time when we went to Malaysia, I was exposed to other martial arts, Shotokan, Kyokushin Kai, Goju Ryu, uh, Bur uh, Malay Silat. And we were there for two months, Singapore, Malaysia, and we traveled. All we did was soaked in martial arts, the whole team five member team we would train in the morning at the kung fu kun up in the rooftop we would go to gt ming's dojo learn goju ryu we would go to uh, the kyoko shingai dojo we'd go to kbi karate budokan international uh, which by the way i believe has a big following in australia kbi karate budokan international and the grandmaster was chu chu suit uh, so you know i would go train at his dojo 
in Malaysia. We were ranked in Shotokan Kinshinkai under his organization. Uh, we became black belts under his certification ranking. And then as a 14-year-old traveling, competing, it just opened my mind. And I just fell in love even more with the martial arts. And thanks to my father's support, my family's support, I started traveling all over the Southeast Asian uh, countries, Philippines, Thailand, Burma, India, you name it. I've been to you know, Far East and competed, trained, learned, and sometimes taught also. So my journey started internationally at age 14. Then I moved, I migrated to the United States, uh, to Houston, Texas in 1985. I came to New York and then from New York to uh, Texas, went to school here. San Jacinto College, Texas Southern University. But I had been teaching professionally starting age 14. I used to teach in my school, my junior high school as a you know young person. And I had 60, 70 students. So I would teach, of course, with the blessing of my teacher, Grandma Satai. Then in age uh, in 1979, I got the youngest title of black belt in Burmese Bondo. And then I got permission to travel more from my teacher. And then in 1980, 81, I opened my own school and started my own system called Bushiban and uh, started Zulfi's Academy of Martial Arts. It was a blend of different styles, which I learned throughout my years, traveling all over, competing, but at the same time connected to my teacher with his blessing. He's very open minded. And even though very traditional, but yet open-minded, he gave me his blessing. I opened my own style, Bushiban. Evolution of Bushiban started in 8081, and it's still learning. It's an evolving, it's a live system. We always learn, incorporate, improve. I was also fortunate to fight on the undercard, where in 1976 or 75, Antonio Anoki, the great, you know, god of wrestling from Japan and the great Akram, Akram Pelwan. They had a freestyle fight in National Stadium in Karachi. And there were like 42,000 spectators live broadcast. You can still find that match on uh, YouTube, Anoki versus Akram, Anoki. So that was my first time exposure to mixed martial arts. So mixed martial arts in that part of the world has been around but it was not called MMA, it was called freestyle wrestling. And right. it would be all strikes. And uh, there's the first time in public, somebody got armbarred. So Anoki beat Akram and broke his shoulder with an armbar. Okay, so now for that fight, the wrestlers came and trained in Burmese Bondo with my teacher. So my teacher was the striking coach. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, Anoki, you know, armbarred Akram because Anoki was really good at grappling. So that's when we started doing judo and our exposure to jujitsu started in 1977. There's a family in India called Baroda family. Very, very cool history of their family. It's just like the Gracie family, parallel to Gracie family, same story, because the Indian army, uh, the Japanese came to India in Second World War and they created some spies and they taught jujitsu to some of those Indian spies. So they started also teaching, uh, recruiting martial artists. So Mr. Baroda, Wala, Dr. Baroda was a judo master. So he was also taught jujitsu. So his sons came to Pakistan for a visit and we were introduced to jujitsu, the way it started, close to the way it started in the Gracie tradition. And that was my first exposure to jujitsu. And they were teaching in uh, the police academy anyway. So I was exposed to the grappling, wrestling, judo at an early age. So I continued to train. When I came to America, I got under the mentorship of uh, great grandmaster, Dr. Mongji. He is the head of American Bando Association, highly respected worldwide authority of martial arts. He introduced kickboxing to the United States. He is a mentor, was a mentor to the great uh, Joe Lewis and... Uh, uh, worked with Ed Parker and Robert Trias. I mean, his history is um, amazing. So he's still alive, 94, 95 years of age. I just saw him last la last uh, uh, October. Uh, he's still my teacher. So he's my mentor. So he's the one who awarded me 10th degree black belt in 2017 under the American Bando Association. So currently, 
I have my own system called Bushy Bond. I hold a 10th degree black belt under the American Bondo Association flag. I train every day as much as I can. I teach every day. I oversee about 40 plus 50 martial arts schools. They are not mine, but I guide them. I mentor them. I coach them all over the world, not only the United States. We have 13 Bushy Bond schools in America. We have many affiliate schools in America. They use my curriculum methodology system, but they have their own unique brand, but they incorporate the Bushy Bond system. From the financial part of it, which is, you know, just a, just a byproduct, we were, I don't know if you know what EFC, Educational Funding Company, is our billing company, part of our billing company. And my headquarters was number one in EFC collection, uh, almost over 10 years, number one grossing school in the United States. And then uh, other schools come up, this wonderful evolution. Uh, we are still with EFC. We're still a very high grossing school, but now we don't share all our numbers with everybody. Each one of our school is very profitable. Uh, we believe our system, our style, our curriculum is very robust and very timely. We learn to adjust to what is the need and want, desire, fears of our client. And we cater to our, uh, our philosophy, student first, martial arts second, business third. So first is always a student. Their wants, needs, desire, what we can do for the student by way of martial arts. And then because we have the business, the business of martial arts changes lives. So students always first. I continue my journey. I've competed all over the world. I've competed in grappling tournaments. I'm no world champion in grappling or Muay Thai. I've been beaten more than I've won, but I've been, you know, over 300 competitions, tournaments, matches, fights from all different styles of, I fought in Thailand, I've done grappling, jujitsu uh, tournaments, I've done boxing tournaments, I've done sports karate tournaments, kickboxing tournaments, kata, weapons, uh, I've had a few world, world titles in weapons and kata and lightweight sparring. So I, I, call, I believe I'm a well-rounded martial artist, but still continue to learn and grow. And my system, Bushiban system, is we call it a supra system. It's a mega system with much integrated concepts, principles, and philosophies. Uh, so it's a eclectic, integrated system with a traditional value base. So we have the traditional values, we have the traditional structure, but the modern approach. Now, I know a lot of schools nowadays are claiming the same thing, but um, I believe that we are one of the pioneers of this mindset and this structure, which we started many, many, many years ago. And if we've gone through a lot of trials and errors and where we are, I believe many schools are starting where we were 20 years ago. And I help a lot of schools refine and define their brand and their presence and their methodologies, because I feel there's many multi-program schools, but they are kind of confused about how to incorporate, how to integrate, how to layer, how to structure, how to bring the chain of different. So there are schools doing program. There'll be a school doing Muay Thai, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, Krav Maga, Taekwondo. Wonderful. But it's not a system-based, it's program-based. We take pride that we are a system-based organization where our system, martial artists, with the structure is eclectic and timely with traditional values. I don't know if that uh, makes much sense and makes, uh, this yes. is tradition for the modern times. Yeah. Um, I'd love to just dive a bit deeper in that, but first just congratulations on the journey. Just, Thank wow. you very much. <laughs> and Thank and you. Still uh, learning, still growing. You're still evolving. You say you still, we're still learning. We're still evolving every day. So it's not like every you've day. reached a plateau that, you know, you, yeah, you, you in a comfort zone where you're at. Just to dive a bit deeper into that, you were referring to sort of like a brand identity where schools can be confused. And I see there's like, we got guys in our group that are one style and that's what they do and that's their focus. And then multiple styles, multiple demographics and so forth. How do you feel about the difference of being able to <clears throat> brand yourself as a multi-style school? And do you feel that there's a point where you, where you should kind of delay it before you add too many styles that you create a culture and an identity for your brand first 
or how do you approach that generally? So there are actually two schools of thoughts. One is the linear school. That doesn't mean, Marshall, that, that means that they have their brand, the style, the system is one. For example, Taekwondo. They know what they know. They are good at it. They're experts at it. And they are successful with that. More power to them. Then there is a school which is a multidimensional school with different different products. If you go to banking, they say different products. They have the jujitsu, they have the Muay Thai, they have the whatever they do, fitness, and which is another model. Which one is better? I've seen mega success in model A, and I've seen mega success in model B. So the key is what is the leadership mindset? What is the leadership's clear? How clear is the leadership on the journey, on the route they are taking? If you are a linear school, that means one style with multiple functions. So you can have Taekwondo, and but you can have fitness Taekwondo, self-defense Taekwondo, but it's uh, it all depends on the leader, their stage and the phase of their life where they are. So if you are a mature school, which you've grown up with a mature brand and you are successful, more power to you. Keep doing what you're doing if you're successful, if you're happy. People can be successful, but they cannot. They might not be content. And people can be content, but they might not have the success, which, quote, unquote, hundreds of students and thousands of dollars. So you find your bliss. You find where it makes you tranquil, where you feel harmony with your brand and your success. And what are you comfortable with? What is your key lifestyle comfort zone? Or are you constantly ambitious, constantly wanting more, more, more? So that is a very private, personal, inner depth question, which when I work with my my uh, students, I coach a lot of school owners, I say, let's define that. Let's find out where you are, where do you want to be, and how we are going to get there. So we need to know your inner self first, before the external, the extrinsic, we define, okay, I need 500 students, I need to make a quarter of a million dollars. You might be doing that, but might not be content. You might be in turmoil, stressed away all your all day, can't sleep. Or you might have 100, 200 students, you make good enough money, you have a beautiful family, you're happy. So we need to find from the top, it, it, it's defined from the top, the school methodologies the school structure is secondary. First, let's see what the leadership is looking for, searching for, and where they find it. Then we break down, okay, linear school or multi-dimensional school. And in that, there are some pros and cons in both of them also. So we decipher that, we find out. I know some people who are mega successful with linear schools, and I know people who are mega successful, with, depending on the stage and age and phase of their life also. So this is a question which it is customized to each individual. I cannot give you a general, yeah. you know, this is, it has to be customized. hundred uh, percent. Interesting that when we take people through the audition process in our partners group, we always start with purpose. And, and the way I always mention to school owners is purpose can be vague, but everyone's purpose is different because you might want to have the multiple schools, the multiple styles, or you just want the lifestyle business. We break purpose then down in three levels. The the income you desire, the impact you want to create through your martial arts, Beautiful. and the lifestyle you want to live. Perfect. And and it's different for everyone because you'll get some, some that say, look, well, I've had this job forever, this other business, like I need the income to do this thing. And others is just, well, I really want the impact. I want to make a difference through my martial arts. And then others want the lifestyle. There's, there's someone to live, eat, breathe, sleep on the mats. And the others... Beautiful want the balance. So I love how you define that, starting with the, the Indian mind. The key is clarity. Are you clear about, so we all have a purpose. We are perfect, might be making a lot of money. Nothing wrong with that. I love to make a lot of money, make a big impact. I love to make a big impact. I love this lifestyle. But how clear are we with our with our framework? How clear are we with our vision? How clear is a vision? How clear is a mission? How clear are our values which align with the business? How clear are we where, where we are in the stage and phase of our development and our maturity, our capabilities, our abilities, 
our roadblocks, our challenges, and our ambitions. How hot is the fire? Where is the fire taking us? So some people are super ambitious, but no clarity. Some people are very clear, but they don't have the fire and desire. They want this, but they don't have, they don't want to work hard. So we have to find that balance. And if it, if the balance is not there, we have to create leverages how to build that balance. So we need to find, okay, your passion is this. Your purpose is this. Let's be clear. There's your ambition. And then let's find out the mechanics of how do we align that. So clarity is very important. I love that. So, so Master Zalfi, twofold question. When did you get that clarity? Was it from day one you knew that this was going to be where you want to go? Or did it evolve? And then once you knew where you want to go, wanted to go, and you already had that first first location, how did you develop that to scale it from two all the way to 13 the way you did? That's probably a loaded question. So, <laughs> so I was very clear at orange belt level that Marshall, I was nine or 10 years old or 11. My, I was very clear that this is going to be my lifestyle because I was influenced and I was around people who inspired me, influenced me, motivated me, not by telling me that you will become a martial arts master or grandmaster or school owner, just by the way of life the, the role model which I had, it inspired me and it gave me a living model of where I wanted to be, who I wanted to be, uh, who, who would be my example of lifestyle. So I saw that at a very early age because Grandma Satai school had hundreds of students in one class. There was a class, they, were, they had 800 students in one class session. Wow. It's unheard of. 800 students. People might be saying, this guy is lying. No, I have photographs of proof. And this was 1975, 1976. I saw how successful a martial artist can be, but it was not the money. I was very young. It was not, it was the impact and it was the respect that person was receiving, the love that was person was receiving and the love he was giving back to his students by way of him being, him being a mentor, master, grandmaster, and the way he taught students and changed lives. And one of them is me, even though I come from a very educated, high value, accomplished family, but I chose very academically, very high, my, I have doctors, engineers, lawyers, and my, but I chose martial arts because that man inspired me by way of his being a role model. So it was at a very early age. And then I pursued. And as I grew older, and I, as, as I traveled early at an early age, 14, 15, 16, 17, and I was exposed to martial arts in the early 70s, mid 70s, late 70s, all over the Southeast Asian continent, I was just, I just fell in love. And I knew this is what I was going to do, even though I went to college, university, but this has been my passion. So my clarity of my purpose has been there. The structure has come through learning as well as trial and error. A lot of it was being trial and error, experimentation, creative thought process, and then aligning myself with the right mentors. Great Grandmaster Mong Ji is extremely learned. He has got double PhD. You know, uh, he's taught at Harvard University. So he's, he's an intellectual extreme. So his guidance might parents' guidance, my other teachers' guidance, so that who we are is a product of our surroundings and our influences, uh, plus what we do on our own, our own journey of inquisitiveness, experimentation, learning, discovery. Now, 13, we've had more schools. Some schools uh, changed the brand and went to a different style, which is okay. Some schools closed down in covid so we have 13 locations right now in America and many, many in Pakistan, Bangladesh, India. We have affiliate in Thailand, also Canada. We are all around and a lot of affiliates. So to answer, it's been a journey. It's been a constant evolution, constant breakthroughs. So when we got stuck with 200 students, you've got to learn 
what is my next breakthrough point? So you discovered it through experimentation, through learning, to going to seminars, and then you found that breakthrough. Then you go to 300 students. Then there's another breakthrough. Then you go to two schools. Then you go to three schools. So each stage and phase, we must come through a breakthrough realization of processes, procedures, philosophies, mindsets, values, and systems, and of course, actions. That is what gets us to the next level. But first, we have to be clear, where do we want to go? Love it. So Zolfi, if we were to take that into a seminar and a workshop, for those that will be attending us in in Australia on the Sunshine Coast, uh, 2 to 4 June 2023, depending on when you're listening to this, what can people expect on the day? I'm going to give you one big claim. All right. I don't like to make big claims. I'm going to share with your attendees a massive breakthrough mindset, which people might know, but never have seen or heard of it this clearly. They might practice it, but with not this structure, which I'm going to give them, I'm going to break down how they can break through if they are stuck in one level or one stage. And I promise you that they will have an epiphany, a a realization that they've they've never had before. And I'm going to give them a formula, an actual formula, which they can go and start applying next day into the business. And I can almost, I'm not going to give a written guarantee, assure you and guarantee that if we meet next year, and if they apply what I'm giving them, the secrets, the breakthrough secrets, realizations, their school will be at a whole another level. Their whole culture will be at a whole another level. I promise you that. Love it. It is, because I know it is. Because when I teach this to my schools, the people who've been in business 30 years, and when they hear this structure, that this, this methodology, they say, oh my goodness. Now I understand. I knew it, but now I see it clearly. Oh my goodness, I never thought of it like this. Wow, what a great realization. Why didn't I think of it before? But it's not a thought, it's a process. I will share step one, step two, step three process. We're going to do roll up our sleeve and we're going to do a workshop. It'll take about two hours to get the whole system down. And I promise you, by the time we are done with the system, the attendees, whoever the lucky person is attending, he or she will have epiphanies, clarity like they've never had before. It's a big claim, and I'll stand behind the claim. I love that. And just to back that up, I just want to illustrate that or put emphasis on that it's a workshop environment. We, a small, High level group, I love it's it. Interactive, it's it's not you know. I know sometimes you go maybe not in the martial arts space, but you go to these events and you know there's one guy standing at the top and tells you this big hero <coughs> hero's journey story and then three little things that you can do and you never get you never get the context. This is not that we in a workshop environment. It's interactive. It's going to be structured for you to get the breakthroughs and be able to ask questions and work on your business. And it's going to not only, not only for Marsha, this system which I've created and I've learned through my trial and errors, pains and hurts and successes, which when I shared, people might have heard or seen it in some form or way, but not in this methodology, not in this way. And we'll do a actual exercise for each dimension of this system. And by the time we get to the final stage, they will realize, wow, I want to start doing this tomorrow. Some of them might be doing this in some way or form, but the way it clarity is going to happen, and it's going to become a system for them. And that system is the secret to the next level of breakthrough. It's not just the idea. It's not just the clarity. It's the process, procedures, and the steps that people need to take to get to to the next level 
We might know that I want to get, I have 400 students, I want to get 600 students. Well, I need to advertise more. No, there's more than to that. But I will give you that process. And when you start applying that process, you will see a systematic rise in your numbers, improvement in your lifestyle, satisfaction in your lifestyle. Your staff retention is going to grow by leaps and bounds. Your staff loyalty is going to grow by leaps and bounds. Your staff commitment is going to grow by leaps and bounds because staff retention, staff loyalty, staff commitment is one of the biggest areas that martial arts schools are faced with. And I will give you the secret how to deal with that. I have students, I have staff with me 20 plus years. Happy staff. The guy who put the deal, he's been with me 20, 22, 23 years. You know, I've got people with me 30 years. You know, students with me 40 plus years. So there's a system. First thing it has to come from the heart. It cannot be artificial. It, can't, it cannot be fake. It has to be from the heart. And I'll share that with you. So I look forward to, you know, sharing this and much more. Many, many more breakthrough ideas, which I guarantee that will take your schools to the next level. No matter how, where you are, no matter you're making quarter of a million dollars a month, you will increase that by 20 to 30%. No matter you're making $20,000 a month, you'll increase that by 20 to 30%. But you have to apply it. I have to give you a system that you have to apply. I love that. Zalfi, I'm now more excited than I was uh, <laughs> when we first had the hey, chat. <laughs> I'm coming all the way to Australia. I'm not gonna come and waste your time or my time. My time is gold, valuable. I want to share what has worked for me. I want to share what I've shared with a lot of top promoters, top producers in the martial arts industry. I'm honored to help them, grow them, guide them, and it, it helps them every day. I'm excited, so they'll be my gift to my Australian fellow martial artists and friends. And for whatever it's worth, if you apply it, I know because it's changed my life. These systems, these ideas, these principles, practices, philosophies have changed my life. And I'm happy to share because when I go travel so far and when you invest so much in me and when I invest so much in you, it has to be worth everybody's time. It has to be valuable, enriching, nurturing, productive, transformational, otherwise it's waste of everybody's time. And I value my time as much as I value your time and I want to give as much as I can. So again, thank you for inviting me and thank you for doing all that you do. And I really look forward to, we will also have different, uh, I know we have a few people who have uh, asked for me to go and do private mentoring for them yeah. and coaching. And I'm really looking forward to some, some tough guys out there, you know, some Australia. <laughs> I said, wow, man. Uh, and I'm honored, you know, uh, the guys who you, you connected me with and I'm honored and I can't wait to go and, you know, share whatever I can with them and some very good martial artists out there. I'm, I'm just really looking forward to being part of your, part of your, you know, organization. That's awesome. Zolfi, thanks so much for your time. And yes, so um, if you like what you've heard today and you want to join us, we started this event as an exclusive uh, members-only event. Uh, we've opened it up to the public for only a few tickets available for that. So we're looking at 2 to 4 June, right on the beach, Mulula Bar on the Sunshine Coast. <coughs> Beautiful location. Reach out to me, george at martialartsmedia.com. If you would like to host Zolfi at your school for a private workshop, um, anything from instructor training to parent workshops. Uh, give us a quick snippet on, on that, Zolfi, just that sure. everyone's familiar. So the, the structure which I have, I do for my affiliate schools or people who invite me into the school. I have a day or day and a half schedule where I do one-on-one -on -one private mentoring with, with the owner only or the key owners or the key. It's a, it's a private session, two-hour brainstorming uh, mastermind session with them. Uh, and we try to find out, investigate, and then see how we can improve, tweak. Start, it just starts with the leadership. Then I also do um, a group instructor training, you know, from instructor to master level or from junior instructor, depending on the maturity of the school. 
We also do martial arts training for their student body. Uh, it could be from weapons to self-defense to striking to ground to you name it, we can work with them. We do also children's workshop with, with uh, what we call combative games and really, really fun. The kids love it. We also do a parent workshop. And that is one of the key, which I want to share with the, with the school owners, how to conduct a powerful parents workshop or parents teacher meeting in social. That it itself is immensely valuable when the schools start doing structured, properly organized parent teacher meeting workshop and social. And I'll share that with you. So I, I do that for some schools also where the parents come in and I motivate them and inspire them to get into the martial arts. I show them the values and benefits of keeping their kids, not that they don't know it, but when it comes from a third party, from another authority from outside your school, it just creates a bigger impact. It just creates a bigger story. And we get the parents to connect with the school. So my job is to help you build your brand to even the next level to even take it to the next level. I'm not there to sell me, I'm there to sell you, even more to your student body, so they see you as the ultimate authority, the ultimate brand, the ultimate go-to source. So my job is to be your aid to grow your school and grow your student body and bring them more closer to you, the parents and the students and the staff, so that you all can create a bigger, stronger brand. Awesome. Zafi, thanks so much for your time and really looking forward to having you over. And yep, if anyone wants to get, wants to host Zafi at, at their school, just email me, george at martialartsmedia.com. Thanks so much. Really looking forward to see you and uh, we'll, we'll chat soon. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, George. And thanks, we'll Zofie. stay in touch soon. All the best. Awesome.